Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of how to turn this lousy image into this still lousy image, but with different color of the smiley. So what did we do? We actually just uh, did some qualifications and uh, added a mask around the smiley, tracked it and then changed the color. So how do you do that in Resolve? That's what you're going to find out right now. So now let's get this walkthrough inside the Winter Resolve. So the first thing we need to understand when we want to make targeted secondary corrections to an image, for example, change the color of that red coat, is how we can isolate uh, this red coat versus the rest of the image. So versus all those areas. All right. So one way to do this is by using one of the qualifier tools, which we have four of in the Winter Resolve. Those are Hue Saturation and Luminance Qualifier, RGB Qualifier, Luminance Qualifier only, and a 3D Qualifier. And let's briefly walk through how those works. So let's start with the HSL Qualifier. And the first thing we're going to notice is that we can um, restrict this qualifier to different areas of our hue, saturation and luminance areas. All right, so I've already started by this. And we can see that with just a few targeted adjustments, we can get here quite far in an instant. So what you usually do, um, however, uh, is not just pick those colors down here, but um, take the color picker tool and pick some colors inside our screen. And we see that we get very, very far with just the blink of an eye. All right, so that's the first thing we can do. So we then can adjust um, the center and um, the width of our selection for the individual channels. And for example, here we would maybe want to add some of those. So we click the uh, add color picker and add some of those areas. And now when we want to remove the black parts around here, uh, we can actually see whether we can target those with the targeted saturation adjustment. And this seems to work pretty well. We always have to make sure that we don't go overboard here because if we go too far, we can just reintroduce the mask in our darker areas down there. And then we actually didn't gain anything. All right. So let's say we add some softness down here to about that point. So let's say we have that key finished so far. Then what we want to do next is actually finesse the mat we just created. And this means um, reduce the noise in the mat around here also um, clean the black areas and then as a last correction also clean the white areas where we don't want any of the mat to spill onto all right so how do we do that we just take a look over to the mat finesse tools and we crank up the denoising which works pretty neat then we clean our blacks, which is nothing but a um, lift adjustment to our grayscale mat. Also, um, it does some despeckling. And then as a last correction, we can add some white cleaning to get a cleaner white mat. So let's take a look at that. All right, give me a second. So we also accidentally changed the low softness. Now let's clean the white mat. Right. Add some clean black in there. And then as last measure, we can also blur out the mat a little and say whether the blur affects more of the inside or the outside portion. And here we go, that looks pretty neat already. So to make you have a better idea of where 
the matte is actually working right now. I'm just changing the hue. And what we can see there is that we're pretty much having a perfect matte already. So um, this matte works pretty well with the matte finesse tools. And now if we were to have some um, issues with the matte being a little bit too big, like in this example, um, we could just go over to the second menu here and shrink the matte with some circle or maybe diamond shaped polygons. And then we crank up the radius a little bit, maybe just for two, and repeat that until we're content. So I don't think we actually need a lot of this, so two might actually do pretty well. And here we can see that the mat is pretty much perfect on uh, all her borders already. And maybe you'll say, okay, there's still some um some violet spill on her face right there and i don't want that so what you're gonna do then is actually combine the qualifiers with the power windows and in the power windows tab we can choose between several forms around here so there's rectangles um there's also circles um there's some freely moving shapes and um, we also can and we can also do some gradient tool or we can draw a free mask and that's pretty much what I want to do right now so I'm just clicking in here and masking out portions of her face and now I'm gonna invert this mask so that the face is not affected. Put that over there a little and then always you can control the softness and the inside and outside portion and I'll just do that up to taste right now. And I feel I'm pretty okay with this. So um, that's pretty much what you can do with masks. You can just add those masks, those power windows to your existing mat or subtract it or invert it, whatever. Um, but now when I scroll over this clip, we'll see that the power window just stays where it is. And that of course introduces some weird color casts on portions of the image we don't want right there. For example, like over here, we can see that there's some minimal color cast over here on her uh, blazer and we don't want that all right so what we're doing now is actually um track this mask to her face so it stays where i originally had that and therefore we want to go over to the tracking window and we want to stay in the cloud tracker and since there's no zoom we won't track for any zoom. Um, yeah, but we will track pan, tilt, rotation, and perspective, and just hit go. And we will see that the wind shoots off, create a point cloud all over here, um, and stuck the window to her face. And if we now disable the window control over there, let's disable this, we can see. Well, Actually, let's enable it. We can see that the power window is stuck pretty well to her face already. Okay, so that's basically the same thing I did with the smiley on my shirt before. So just to uh, quickly show you how I did that thing with the smiley, um, here's actually the note tree. So that's just the first prior correction to the note. Um, so there's uh, nothing really going on except for some color correction um, and then I went over there um, added the power window to the smiley just roughly uh, windowing it out tracking it to the smiley so it stays on there very nice and then I added some qualifiers so over here in the HSL qualifier I just qualified for the yellow color of the smiley and last thing I did was then actually um, go to the point where my fingers snip.
and add two keyframes. So one keyframe before the snip, one after, and on the second one, change the color of the smiley via hue adjustment. So I'm gonna do some advanced tutorials on uh, qualifiers and keys and how to manipulate keys with different node architectures. And if you're interested in that, just keep it up, give us a like, subscribe, and I'll catch you next time.